I'm going to try to keep it down to 10 minutes. If you see me look at my watch, that's why. Um, the voters of California passed an initiative to allow mar medical marijuana to be sold. It was uh, portrayed to the public that it would be for people who were suffering from horrible diseases and they needed to relieve themselves of pain. The fact is, it's uh, organized uh, for-profit groups that were pushing that initiative. They've now opened up medical marijuana uh, businesses uh, wherever they can. Like many cities, the city of San Marino has banned them. They're opening up anyway because they make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a day. Uh, a very large percentage of their customers are young people under the age of 21, even children. You can go on the internet and you can get a counterfeit medical marijuana card. You don't have to go to a doctor or anything else. Um, although we have banned them in our city, there is litigation going. They have enough money to file, hire lawyers to fight the attempts to close them down. What has happened is this. At one point, we had 43 medical marijuana clinics, not clinics, businesses in the city. The city attorney's office, the police department, and fire department have closed 19 of those. There are about 23 left. Um, we've worked closely with the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration, Drug Enforcement Agency. Although California allows these businesses, they are banned under federal law. It is a federal crime to possess or sell marijuana. The Drug Enforcement Agency has been very busy throughout the state of California. Uh, we've shared with them the list that we have of the medical marijuana businesses in our city. They've been here three times. They've, we've, uh, our office has served inspection warrants on all 43 of the clinics, of the uh, businesses, as I've indicated, 19 have closed. We've issued them all administrative civil penalties, which is $1,000 per day per violation. Drug Enforcement Agency, with our investigators and the police, have hit every one of them, ordered them to close. Most of them have not. The uh, a court up in Northern California has ruled that cities do not have the authority to close them. Fourth District Court of Appeal in Riverside ruled that cities do have the authority to close them. When district courts, district appellate courts, uh, have a conflict where one says one thing and the other says the other. The California Supreme Court takes the case. The Supreme Court has taken the case. When they take the case, it vacates the lower court decision, which means we can't do anything right now until the Supreme Court makes its ruling. Some people have said, well, why can't you go close them down because they don't have business licenses? Because we don't give business licenses to those facilities. Because the federal courts do not um, allow, and the state courts do not allow cities to go in and use city rules to um, impact a business or close a business down when there's an issue of law relative to that, relevant to that business that is pending before the Supreme Court. The court recognizes that what this, if we did that, that we would, we would get hit with another lawsuit and they'd say, you know, come on you guys, you're playing a game here. Uh, you're, closed, you're not really closing them down because they don't have a business license or because they don't have a condition use permit. You're closing them down because they're a med medical marijuana business. So we're on hold with them. We keep an eye on them. Um, uh, Councilmember McCammock uh, is here informed me of a new one uh, about a week and a half ago. We've already checked that out. We continue to, as new ones pop up to serve administrative inspection warrants on them, and we will be continuing to, uh, to do that. Right now, our hands are pretty much tied until the Supreme Court makes its decision. So they come down in favor of the cities, say, yes, we can close them. We will be out closing all of them. Um, it'll, it'll take a while to get them all closed because we'll have to file lawsuits. Right now, they're making enough money where they can afford to, afford to pay $1,000 per day um, uh, in fines. But those fines can't be collected until the Supreme Court rules. Because the Supreme Court rules we don't have a right to close them. That also means we don't have a right to fine them, in which case those fines will go away. Uh, we are leaning the property, though. We've, all, we've notified the property owners that um, these fines are, are accruing as a lien on their property, and the Supreme Court rules in our favor, we will go after to try to collect those liens. That's pretty much it on the medical marijuana that I can tell you. Um, quickly on the city's bankruptcy, we're moving ahead with that. We have a hearing set for Thursday in federal bankruptcy court in Riverside. That may not go. The county has um, uh, apparently thought that we were going to try to continue dumping at the county landfills. 
We are not. For the last three or four months, the plan has been to um, take the waste that we collect in the city of San Bernardino and take it to transfer stations that Republic and Vertec uh, uh, have, one in the city and one on the boundary with San Bernardino and Colton. And uh, I talked to the bankruptcy attorney tonight. In fact, I got here early tonight, and I sat in my car on my cell phone talking to our bankruptcy attorney out of town. He said the county was surprised to learn that um, we had made other arrangements. So we may not go through with the hearing on Thursday. <clears throat> then on thir Friday the 21st, we have a hearing on CalPERS in the bankruptcy court, and they are trying to get relief from the stay that the bankruptcy court has placed in all litigation because they want to sue the city uh, for the money we owe them. If we paid them the money we owed them, we wouldn't have the money to pay our payroll for, the, for our police and firefighters. So. Um, the Sun ran an article the other day that said that they, the Sun newspaper talked to several experts who think that CalPERS will not be successful. I don't know. Uh, we never know what a court's going to say or do. And it's not a good idea for a lawyer who's involved in a lawsuit to predict what the court's going to do. So I'll leave it to those lawyers to talk in the newspapers and predict what they think will happen. Um, we're, we are hopeful. Um, things are very bad in the city. There's no doubt about that. Our murders have increased over 50% from last year. We're down about 80 police officers. The uh, top level that we had several years ago was 350. We actually think we need about 450, but we're down 80 from the 350, and we expect we're going to be down even more. So you really need to read that second page that's attached to your agenda. There's some very, very good ideas there. I know Mrs. Feminine and I, I do those at our, at our homes, a lot of other people do. Um, I want to emphasize to people I have to be careful how I say this because the newspaper gets all excited uh, when, I, when I say what I'm, how I say these things. Um, several months ago, during a Kelwise Council meeting, I, we had heard a rumor that some people uh, wanted to arm themselves and go after some of the homeless camps and clean some of the people out. And I said at that council meeting, do not do that. Do not engage in vigilante activity because you will be arrested and you will be prosecuted. And you're not the good, the good people in this room, the good people in San Bernardino are not the ones who need to be sitting in, in jail. And the problem with homeless and the problem with a lot of the parolees is that because of AB 109, they have had to release a lot of prisoners from the state prisons to ease the overcrowding. And because they've had to release those people, they've come back to our cities. San Bernardino has a higher than normal criminal population because for years LA County dumped their parolees here in our county and the state director of parole of corrections Robert Presley in the year 2000 admitted that they had been doing that for years those people now live here legitimately so when they commit crimes and they're released they get paroled back to our city in addition they're releasing all these supposedly nonviolent criminals and many of them are really really are violent Many of them um, may have committed an armed robbery that was plea bargained down to a burglary. A burglary of an, of an unoccupied dwelling is a nonviolent crime. So they get paroled because they're a nonviolent criminal. But really, what they did was, was a violent crime. Um, we have others who have been to serve time maybe for murder, got out, got arrested for an, a nonviolent crime, and they got released on the nonviolent crime. That doesn't mean they're not violent. So we have a real problem. We can arrest these transients. Um, these uh, homeless people who beg at the freeway, almost all of them have warrants out for their arrest. But the sheriff cannot take them at his jail because his jail is filled with violent criminals. And every time he admits somebody new into the jail, he has to release somebody out. So he cannot take people that we arrest for non-violent crimes. So that's why we have so many homeless people. So you really have to be careful. Um, but you cannot take the law into your own hands. I would not advise anyone who has children at home to keep a loaded firearm in the house. You are asking for trouble. Children from toddlers to teens are attracted to guns. Even if you have it up high in a closet, they will get chairs and everything else. Toddlers will. I know of a tragic case involving a four-year-old who father was a police officer. Gun was up in the Top shelf in the closet, little boy climbed up somehow, got it, shot himself. Horrible case. None of you would want that to happen. If you have children at home, I don't care if they're 17, teenager, you know, to four, three, two, whatever, don't keep a loaded gun. If you've never had any um, 
training in firearms, you should not run out and buy a gun. You should get training first. There are places you can get it. The gun stores uh, have information on courses. The Sheriff's Department has an excellent program called Lady Beware. And you can go to the Sheriff's Department and sign up for that or call there. And they give you uh, training in how to make, harden yourself as a target, uh, what to watch out for, how to avoid situations. They also give you hands-on training on shooting rifles, shotguns, and handguns. If you don't have children at home, if you do know how to handle a weapon, San Bernardino is that dangerous now. My advice to you is when you go home, that's your situation, lock your doors, if you have guns, load them. I'm not quite out of time, but I'll, but I'll stop. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you very much.